Hi there and welcome to the Cessna 152 pre-flight video. My name is Mikhail Francia and before we get started, there are two things you're going to have to source. The first thing is the Cessna 152 POH. Now over at section 4 of this document, there will be a checklist procedure specifically for the pre-flight. Now this is something you want to review beforehand and once you're done with that, you can go ahead and source a Cessna 152 checklist or the condensed checklist. This will have your pre-flight information before takeoff, before landing. Specifically, we're looking for the pre-flight section. Now let's get started. Now, like what we said, first thing we're gonna take a look at is the checklist. Make sure you have this with you on hand for quick reference and if there are things that you can go and forget. You might forget. We're gonna go ahead and move closer and for everything, we'll do a quick walk around just to make sure there aren't any uh, significant things that need to be addressed uh, as much as possible with this situation. I go ahead and check the chains to see if they're still connected over to the plane. Sometimes these may have gust locks depending on the winds. Now those are orange bars towards the back. Um, this is a very general check, but it helps overall. Uh, first thing will be, uh, and we're going to get closer to that later on. There you go, we have the chains. We're going to go ahead and open the door. Okay, first thing is we want to be able to check out the fuel levels. Now what I grab there is a fuel stick. It has to be specifically for the Cessna 152 and for that uh, quantity of fuel. There will be bars or notches on the fuel stick that tell you how much fuel you have um, essentially we're gonna go ahead and climb up and if you noticed there are steps you can only step left foot left foot right foot always hold on with your left hand and you have the fuel cap over there we're gonna twist it outwards and the earliest now if you didn't see that there's already fuel in the top that kind of means it's full so you can see the liquid over there and we're gonna go ahead and recheck with a fuel stick straight all the way down and look at where the uh, gas or the shiny part essentially stops. You have to be careful with this because the gas tends to evaporate quickly. But from what we see, that is a full fuel situation. We're going to put that back in and make sure it's flat with the length of the plane. That's how you know it's closed, at least for this model. Now we're going to go over to the right, to the other fuel tank. Remember, hold on first with your hand, right foot. Close to the engine, left foot on the strut, open that back up, and check the fuel again. We are going to use the fuel stick for this one, and essentially the same thing as the other. Uh, as much as possible, these would both want, these should be both equal in terms of the amount of fuel. This helps out with the weight and balance. Once again, very important, make sure the fuel cap is straight. Now that we're done with that, we are going to move over to the inside of the plane, the cockpit, and check the documents and the squawks. Make sure you put that in first. And all right, just went and grab the checklist, place that. Make sure you have your documents. We will follow the arrow checklist. So airworthiness certificate, you have your registration, operating handbook, and the weight and balance, as well as any supplements. Make sure these are all up to date and all with the same tail number of the plane itself. Very easy to confuse the two. We're checking the control lock now by removing it, putting it over by the back, where you can easily find that later on. And we'll go ahead and check the ignition switch now, making sure that's placed towards the off position. Avionics, checking all the nav, traffic, GT, and audio is off, including the master. And the master switch, we can check if it's going to be on. That is the off position. Now we're turning it on. And the fuel quantities, will, that's the uh, gauge right on top of the yoke. That says full. And we'll go ahead and check the fuel shuttle valve as well. Well, it has to be flat with the floor. That's how you know it is um, on. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn the lights as well as the pito heat on. Because it should already be on. Now we can check the dome light now. And if we're gonna go around, the beacon definitely has to be flashing. Position light is there, it's white. 
then we're gonna go walk around uh, check the right wingtip that should have a green light that's working there you go you will have the taxi and landing lights in front as well as the other nav light over on the left which is supposed to be red now we're gonna go ahead and check out the pitot heat to make sure it is working by touching it and seeing if it's warm i'm gonna go ahead and enter back again and let's go ahead and uh, check the dome light again turn all the lights except for the beacon off including the pitot heat and we'll go ahead and put the flaps down check the right flap check the left flap make sure it goes all the way down there you go checking the left checking the right we can go ahead and turn the master switch off now and do another check of the fuel shutoff valve which we're gonna see in three two one there you go all right and we're gonna go outside and check the left use lodge checking for any dents and uh, screws that may have popped out checking for antennas that would be the vor then we have the com this is the elt antenna that going down for the transponder right there the fin and we are going to climb the plane again and check out the gps now this has to be a fix and making sure that there's no paint over it the paint blocks the signal from coming out hence the warning label all right so now that we have checked all the antennas we are going to make our way back to the tail surface now we're going to run our hand oh, run our hand through make sure there aren't any dents on the surface now this is going to be the elevator when you move it up and down make sure that you can only hold it from the left part which is the most structurally sound area make sure the right one also moves up these are supposed to move together look under see if there are any blockages see if there are any freight cables nothing so far and from there we are going to make our way to the rudder and there you go up make sure there aren't any big dents and when you handle it make sure you handle it straight over the uh, where the line of the screws are this is supposedly the more structurally sound area moving it to the left and to the right checking the cables on the bottom make sure they're taut and before you do this just remember you have to take out the control lock as well there's also some move now we're checking the skid plate we're looking for any bends or for freshly scratched paint. This is usually an indication of a recent tail strike. If you see that, send it over to maintenance or have it checked out. Now we're going to check the right elevator. The main thing about this is that this is the one with the trim tab. That's the strut for the trim tab or the bar. Make sure it's not moving too far. And don't really handle the trim tab too much. It's a very sensitive area as well as the rudder trim which is the flap of metal we saw earlier on checking the tail surfaces again over the right side and running our way through the left or to the right area which is essentially the same thing as the left. Uh, we are going to make our way over to the flaps first, checking sure the struts are well connected, going back under, and you know, just making sure there's nothing that looks too off about these. Checking the bar, there has to be a little bit of give in the bar, and all right, moving our way to the ailerons again over in the right. Moving it back up and down, seeing if it's working free. And on the opposite level as the other aileron. Okay, now we're going to go and make our way back to the right side of the wing, checking the light, making sure there aren't any cracks. Running your hand along the surface, make sure there aren't any significant bumps as well. That would be in the cabin air intake. And now we're going to go and make our way over to the right main gear. Go check that first. 
There you go. Right main gear has the right wheel as well as the brakes. For the brakes, I make sure that the disc brake is pretty thick, thicker than a quarter, and making sure that yeah there aren't uh, any red liquids coming out of the mechanism because that's brake fluid that shouldn't be leaking out. The tires, uh, make sure there isn't a lot of threading, or making sure there isn't any threading at all. I think for this one it's due, well close to due for a change and we want to make sure it still has enough air. Now we'll go ahead and check the right engine cowling. Checking over by the door. Now two important things, fuel strainer drain and the oil. The orange cap is on, we'll unscrew first. We'll check the oil has to be around four to six quarts. Run your hand uh, pulling it out. Drain around until you see where the oil is in relation to the six over there, so it tells us we have approximately five quarts. That's good. Now we'll go ahead and close that. Not too tight. Handle the fuel strainer drain later on. But now we'll go along the propeller and the nose gear. Run our hands along, making sure there aren't any uh, chips, any bumps, any dents. And over to the alternator belt. Checking, making sure that is tight and not loose. Always handling that behind the propeller in case it decides to start. Checking the oil cooler out. At this stage, we're just checking if, there are anything, if there's anything blocking it. So, um, it could be dust, it could be a nest, whatever. It has to be clear. Now we're gonna go down over to the main gear. Checking out the oil strut. Has to be three fingers width. It's a bit tight over there. So we want to have to check the oil quantities, make sure there aren't any significant leaks, not quantities, oil leaks, I meant. Checking the tire, make sure the air is still sufficient. We'll go ahead and check the shimmy damper, which measures or uh, controls the left to right vibration. All wheel controls up and down, if we're being very simple about it. Now we have one of the air vents. We're going to check that, check the bottom, static port and the pedal tube over here. Now, important things about these, these have to be clear without any dust, water, snow, whatever it is covering it. As this will be the source for your altimeter, your vertical speed indicator, and your airspeed indicator. Now, we're going to check the fuel vent. It's fine if it's leaking, especially when it comes to full tank or hotter situations where the fuel needs an outlet. We're gonna check the stall horn here, making sure there aren't any blockages. It's a bit hard to see, so we're just gonna go zoom in a bit. You don't want any dust covering that because that is where you will get the indication of an impending stall. Now, we're going to slowly move along the left wing, moving our hands over. Once again, looking for any dents, checking the lights. Make sure the aileron, ailerons are structurally sound, structurally sound and moving oh. in the opposite way and freely as down. well. And we're going to check the connector. It should be, you know, it should be moving, shouldn't be too stuck. As well as the flaps, we're going to slowly move it up and down based on oh, where the, I, I um, the screws are. As well as checking the bottom of the flaps. Making sure everything is secured. We are then, after checking the flaps, going to check the main gear. Same thing as the right. Looking for leaks for the uh, brake fluid. Making sure the tire is fine, not too deflated. Like what I said, you know, this is maybe due for replacement soon. Looking at what I'm seeing with the tread, especially the top part. After that, we go ahead and take a step back. Making sure we've covered everything with a checklist. And I think at this stage, just should be time for the fuel drains. Now we're gonna bring that out. This fuel drain, two things essentially, the chamber and the stick at the top. That's what you're going to plug into this tiny nut over here or the nut looking thing. That's a hole which will allow the fuel to come down if we press in it. And we wanna fill it maybe around halfway or a little tiny little less than halfway is fine as well. Thing is, this has to be blue. We uh, stopped a bit too quickly in that one, but we can see that later on with the right one as well. So I can push up on it, 
a lot of fuel to come out and 100 low lead is going to be the blue liquid do not confuse that with a clear liquid like water that's why you put it right beside a white section just be able to compare the two because one is water one is fuel you would not want your plane to fly on fuel uh, on water i meant now we are going to check the fuel drain or the fuel strainer drain that white square over there we are going to go ahead and pull that up you pull this one? there you go and i'm going okay. to place the fuel strain down on that metal tube right, yep. and allow the fuel to go down like we said maybe around halfway through making sure that's blue liquid that's confirmed we've all checked the fuel levels with full fuel so this is good fuel wise after you've checked all the fuel right, make sure you've disposed of it properly water. with fuel cans and at this point we're close to done we are just going to go ahead and make a final walk around as you can see later on we've um, took the liberty of taking down the uh, chains but in the same situation as the first walk around we are going to see if they we missed anything the chains are something that a lot of people tend to forget maybe they take out the left or the back and forget about the right or they forget about the back one, which is the one that's hardest to see. Um, altogether, not that hard of a pre-flight check. You just have to be very thorough. Try to go over every single thing in a systematic way. And uh, yeah, hopefully you learned from this one. And uh, so let us know if you have any questions.